Chapter 13, Placing Dimensions. This chapter reviews dimensioning tools within MicroStation. Topics include dimension element defined, controlling the display of dimensions, dimensioning, dimension styles, and modifying a dimension element, as well as other dimension tools. The dimensions task is listed at the very, very bottom of the drawing task on the F.Plans Development task. We can open this up as a toolbox to take a look at it. As always, remember that dimensions are able to be turned on and off in the View Attributes dialog, which is at the top left corner of your view window. You can turn dimensions on and off. I'm going to leave them on because this chapter is about dimensions. Dimensioning is a crucial step in the design process. A designer must clearly convey their intentions for their design by dimensioning the elements contained in the construction documents. Dimensions are critical when it comes to actually building work depicted in a design. Correct dimensions can help avoid costly job site mistakes. Proper use of MicroStation dimension capabilities helps to avoid errors. Once the drawing objects have been established at the proper size, scale, and orientation, annotation generally begins. Adding dimensions, symbols, and notes to a drawing, sometimes referred to as detailing, conveys intent when it is time for the drawing to become something real. A dimension is a label in a design showing linear, angular, or radial measurement. A dimension can be placed with the dimensioning tools as separate lines, line strings, and text, or as one dimension element. A dimension can have the following components. Dimension lines, dimension text, extension lines, which are optional, dimension line terminators, which are also optional, and prefixes and suffixes referring to center, diameter, radius, etc., which are also optional. Dimension elements have the following advantages. A dimension element can be modified easily. A dimension element can be associated with the element or elements it dimensions. Such an associated dimension updates automatically when any of the dimensioned elements are modified. Hmm. Using dimension elements can significantly reduce the size of a design file that has many dimensions since a dimension element is usually smaller than the corresponding individual elements. When the Working Units option in the Units tab of the Dimension Styles dialog is on, if the working units of a design file is changed, dimension elements will display dimensions based on the new working units. So they update with the change of working units in a file. So what tools do we have here and what are we going to go over? Just like any toolbox, you can turn off certain tools if you don't want to see them by right clicking and checking the checkbox. We've got the dimension element tool, which is sort of the catch-all smart line of dimensioning. We've got the dimension linear. That's for placing linear dimensions, if you hadn't guessed that. Angular dimension tool for dimensioning angles. Change dimension, which is just like the change attributes tool. It allows you to change a dimension, usually based on style. The match dimension attributes, so you can select the dimension attributes off of a dimension element, and the reassociate dimensions, which recreates a linear or radial dimensions association to an element. So if a dimension becomes disassociated from the element of dimensions, you can reassociate that dimension. Now I mentioned that the element dimension tool is kind of the smart line of the dimension tools because it knows what it's dimensioning. That's a linear dimension. All I had to do was click on the element. I click on this one, it knows that it's a radial dimension. And it automatically switches back based on what element you're dimensioning. It does have other settings. I'm going to undo that so I can redo this. We've got dimension element label line which puts that dimension which includes the length of the line and the angle right on the line and we've got the dimension size for perpendicular line so if you're going to draw a perpendicular line say from one point to another the perpendic perpendicular distance between two points And with the radial, we've got dimension radius, dimension diameter, dimension diameter, 
and dimension diameter parallel. So that's sort of like the linear depiction of the diameter for that arc. Now with the F.SS4 software, we deliver dimension styles. It's already ready to go. You only really have to select one dimension style. You won't need to change your text or change your terminator arrows or do anything to modify the dimensions. If you want a standard F.dimension style, it's already delivered with the F.SS4 software. All you have to do is select F.dimension. And you might recall that these same settings are used for the leader lines with terminator arrows when placing note text. Dimension angular is obviously for dimensioning angles. We've got angle size, angle location, angle between lines. So you can select elements and then place your angle like that. We've got arc size and arc stacked. And once again, there are different alignment options here view alignment, drawing true and arbitrary. We're going to find out more about those during the actual exercise in placing dimensions. So once again, I don't have to go over too much in this uh, introduction to this chapter because all of those dimension styles are set up for you and the dimension tools already do their job pretty automatically. So let's, uh, let's go ahead and go to exercise 13.1. In exercise 13.1, we are going outside of an F dot standard file name, and we are going to open up the file dim1. It's located in the roadway folder under your data set. I'm opening up dim1.dgn. And we're going to be learning about dimensions in my favorite way, which is just kind of experimenting with the tools here. So let's window in on this structure over here. We're going to select our dimension element tool. You'll notice the last thing we dimensioned was a radial dimension. But when we select point 0.1 right here and move towards point 0.2, it automatically switches to a linear dimension. The next thing the exercise wants us to do is select near point 0.3 and move towards point 0.4. You'll see that automatically switches you to a radial dimension. And if you go to point 0.5 to point 0.6, it stays there. But then, hey, look. We go to 0.7 and then 0.8, and it goes back to linear dimension. Now let's hit undo, so control Z. We're going to remove that dimension. And let's start that one over. Now to show you how we can change the readout of these dimensions, let's click on this line near 0.7 and move towards 0.8, but don't enter a data point to accept it yet. And switch over to label line right here in the dialog. You'll notice this has changed. But before we enter data point again, Take a look, 3.1 and it's 270 degrees. If we go up to settings, design file, to angle readout, switch the format to degrees, minutes, seconds, and the direction mode to bearing, and click OK, now you'll see it's changed the angle readout. Now let's make sure to reset this box back to the way it had been. Moving on to exercise 13.3, placing dimensions with different alignments. Now I mentioned earlier that there are different alignment settings, view, drawing, true, and arbitrary when placing dimensions. We're going to select the dimension element tool again, which I have open here, and we've set the alignment to view. I'm going to zoom in here and enter a point here and move towards this point here. This dimension's according to the view relative to that line. We're going to talk about measurement tools later, but let's just measure this real quick. See, that's two feet, three and a half inches. But the distance that it's actually measuring is this distance from here to here. Let's go back and change the alignment to drawing. Enter a data point here at point three. Move to point 0.4. Well, what's it measuring there? Let's find out. Use my measuring tool. That's 2.2 feet and 6 inches. So what it's really measuring is the point from there to there, once again. What's the difference between drawing and view? The alignment basically determines 
what, along what axis the dimension is being aligned. In view, it's parallel to the view x or y axis. It's useful when dimensioning 3D references with dimensions parallel to the viewing plane. Whereas drawing is parallel to the design plane x or y axis and the design rotation determines the alignment axis for the particular dimension. In this situation with a 2D design, they're effectively the same. Let's go back to this tool and select a true alignment. Two and a half feet. Let's measure that. Indeed, it's two and a half feet. That is the true distance from there to there. I could also see this being an important way to measure this distance if we're measuring like the distance from here to here of a larger structure and they need to know the elevation from here to here. Or perhaps if you're looking for the depth of a ditch in your cross section, this could be your slope and you're actually measuring from the top of the existing ground down to the ditch bottom. Now let's use my favorite alignment setting, arbitrary. Arbitrary allows you to place the dimension in any sort of location, like way over here. And what it's measuring is once again the actual true distance from here to here. So it's dimensioning this line like this, but it's allowing you to place the extension lines and dimension line wherever you'd like to place it. You can also place a string of dimensions, and so that's what we're going to do in this exercise. I'm selecting the Linear Dimension tool. Go back to that. Got my F dot dimension settings selected. We're just going to follow the prompts and follow the points. Dimension here to here. Move up to this point, to this point, to this point, and then reset this point to this point, to this point, and then reset. So you can easily place a string of dimensions. We're going to go back to the element dimension tool and we're going to dimension a typical section. So this will be file, open, and we're going to locate the typical section RD01. That's located in your roadway folder of your data set. And click OK. All right, once that file is open, you should be able to locate this typical section here. I'm going to use the window tool to get a nice view right like that. That's perfect. So step three is to select the dimension element tool. I'm going to move this out of the way because it's covering one of my points. Set the dimension style to f.dim and we're going to zoom in on the right side of this typical section. We're going to select this point and draw a dimension. There's one dimension. Next we're going to move to the other side and select this and create another dimension for a radius. Alright, we can see the, the whole drawing so far. Let's switch to dimension linear and what we're going to do is place a data point at point 3 and then it says point 4, and we're going to dimension the entire width of this typical section and reset. Next we're going to try a, a tool we haven't talked about which is, it's a setting, the select multiple elements setting. I'm selecting this button right there that says select multiple elements. And we're going to draw a line from point number 6 to point number 7 and move our dimensions upwards. And what that has done is it has dimensioned every single point that it has crossed. Now we might need to do a little bit of stylistic rearranging there, but if you had multiple points that you wanted to dimension all at once, the distances between them, you could use that functionality of the place dimensions. It may simply be that this, is, this drawing is at a slightly different scale than we're working in right now, and we just need to reduce the scale to make all of these, all of this text a little smaller. Or maybe we just don't need that many dimensions. That's the end of chapter 13 on dimensioning. We're moving forward into chapter 14, information and measuring tools.